Hi, I'm Jake Williams with Scoop News Group. We are excited to be here at AI Week talking to Amit Sheth, the founding director of the Artificial Intelligence Institute at the University of South Carolina. Amit, thanks for being with us. My pleasure. So, I mean, you have a, a really exciting and interesting story when it comes to artificial intelligence. Tell me about your personal journey with AI. You, you've been working in this field for a few decades. What have you learned and seen? Where is AI now as opposed to where it was when you started? My first job uh, after my PhD was at Honeywell Research in 1985, where I did prologue programming and uh, built uh, uh, an expert system. Uh, that was an expert system uh, about the aircraft landing gear. Um, and uh, that was very much a part of AI in those days. My second job was at Unisys, where in 1988, I led a project uh, uh, funded by DARPA, a $1.6 million project uh, for, to integrate AI and databases. Uh, the idea was to uh, make an AI system use very large amount of factual data. And so we looked at uh, integrating interpreted to compile forms of logic uh, with the relational database systems. Um, the third significant milestone was when I founded um, the first semantic web company in the US in 1999. Uh, it, it was called Tali and later it was called Semagics after acquisitions and mergers. And it built the first commercial semantic search engine for the web. Um, and in that process, it used a large ontology or dynamically maintained ontology or knowledge graph to give the semantics to the search terms and to the data that is being searched. And that was 12 years ahead of uh, uh, the time when Google came out with uh, its semantic search engine. There was also a patent that we uh, got in year 2000, 2001 on the application of these uh, knowledge graph driven technology for browsing, searching, profiling, personalization, and advertisement. Um, in 2005, we talked about complementary nature of statistical AI or machine learning with symbolic AI or formal knowledge and uh, uh, logic-based processing and beyond. Uh, so there was a paper titled Semantics for the Semantic Web, the informal the formal and the powerful. And um, this is highly relevant to the current interest in uh, the neuro symbolic AI systems, uh, which is a part of so called third wave of AI that we are just starting now. In terms of where AI is now, uh, there is a, um, a good bit of hype, but at the same time, significant uh, number of real world successes. If I just look at the AI Institute, which I direct, we have translational research project currently um, that span medicine, public health, epidemiology, future manufacturing, neuroscience, astrophysics, education, and social good. Um, and um, at a recent um, uh, World Forum, uh, the CEO of the Bain Capital said that Every company is an AI company. Um, and I also recently used that uh, statement uh, to give a talk exactly on the title, giving the example of um, real world use of AI in industry right now. At the same time though, interestingly, uh, I have said that uh, we are nowhere, nowhere close to the singularity and I will not see singularity in my lifetime. That's interesting. That, that's a great point to lead the answer off of that question on. But uh, let, let, let's dive in a little deeper into something else you said in, in that answer, which is you know, really around this integration of data and knowledge. It's, it's one of the interesting conversations that's happening in, in AI right now. And there's been a lot of talk about how it's going to fuel sort of the next wave of, of AI. So, so tell me uh, about some of your work around the integration of data and, and knowledge. Let's look at the analogy from human intelligence. Uh, it is said that our human brain, uh, uh, you know, is bombarded with about 11 million bits of sensory data per second. But our conscious brain converts all that data into information and knowledge upon which we base our decision and actions. So, um, how does that happen? And I 
I'm of, I believe that knowledge and experiences that humans have play a very important role. So, um, and I also get cue, take cues from other disciplines. Um, in uh, cognitive science, uh, they talked about bottom brain and top brain. Uh, Daniel Kahneman, the Nobel Prize winning economist, has talked about system one, uh, which does kind of fast processing uh, and does the perception, fast thinking and perception, and system two, which does slow thinking, cognition, deliberate decision making, and such. And neuroscience also has also recognized this form of dichotomy of things that. Um, and, and I, I also see that um, there is start of the work which explicitly looks at the use of knowledge in the pipeline of going from raw data to decisions and actions. So um, with the same kind of, uh, you know, with, with that kind of analogy, I see that um, the current uh, body of research in statistical AI needs to be informed a lot more with explicit knowledge. And when that is the case, then we'll make these systems a lot more intelligent. While um, we have beat human level of performance in some of the very specific and narrowly defined tasks, in many broader uh, tasks and general common sense issues and decision making, um, I think we are far off. And the role of knowledge will be critical. And um, we will see, so I think as we kind of move into the so-called third uh, wave of AI, uh, you'll see close integration of data and knowledge along with all of those techniques and algorithms we use for uh, deep learning and statistical learning. So, I mean, you kind of alluded to it there in your in your last answer. Answer. Let's get a little bit more specific. Tell me about how this integration works at a more practical level. What does this third wave of AI mean for industries like healthcare, education, and, and others? Yeah, so let's look at a uh, little bit more concrete um, in terms of how this knowledge gets into the AI systems, and then we'll talk about healthcare and uh, education. Um, there is a uh, body of work that my, my team has done. We call it knowledge infused learning. So, um, and we hope that that will drive, uh, or it will be one critical component in driving uh, this progress towards neuro symbolic computing or hybrid AI, in which um, statistical and symbolic AI seamlessly come together, bonded by the use of knowledge. Uh, what happens is that, uh, so we talk about in our work, shallow, semi-deep and deep infusion of knowledge into the deep learning techniques. What happens in the shallow infusion is to take the knowledge and uh, map it to uh, a vector form called embeddings and then integrate with the statistical learning. So you use the existing uh, uh, learning techniques, deep learning techniques, and essentially bring knowledge to the form of data uh, it does give improvement, but you also lose a lot of semantics that is there in the rich knowledge representation. If you go towards the deeper infusion forms, then what happens is that um, we can explicitly recognize the role of abstractions in human, uh, uh, you know, in human processing of data and in human intelligence. Uh, the, the role of abstraction has been not uh, has not been leveraged much at all in the AI so far. There are there is work on that, but in terms of reducing that to machine to, to algorithms, there is very little work. But I think that is what is starting to happen, and that's what we are trying to do with deep learning. So as you will think, um, the, as you see, for example, deep learning, there are layers uh, in the processing. Correspondingly, you can imagine that there are layers of think of them as representing layers of abstraction. And now think about having stratified knowledge representation, knowledge that is representation for low level things versus high level things from pixels to objects. So, and, and then if you can figure out a way to combine the two, align the two and come up with a unified system, then that is the deep, deep infusion. Um, I just feel, you know, in a brain inspired uh, computing form, 
that that is the sort of thing that our human brain may be doing and that's what we are trying to achieve in the deep infusion uh, in the knowledge infusion uh, area of work now um, as i mentioned you know uh, statistical learning has done wonders for some industries uh, in making certain decisions in computer vision is a very good example but if you think about um, disciplines like um, medicine or, or or healthcare uh, it is very important that um, the system, AI system, is aware of medical knowledge that already exists and that it knows or it is informed about medical guidelines that a doctor may be using in making their decision when they come up with a diagnosis or decide the treatment. They are using medical guidelines. It's not, so they are not going to accept an AI system that is a black box that suddenly gives you some prediction of what will happen to the patient or some uh, you know uh, uh, suggestion that use this medicine not that medicine or use this procedure not that procedure they need to tie uh, they need to see uh, you know starting with the data to the decisions that they make choices they make how uh, the current medical knowledge is used, how medical guidelines are, uh, you know, incorporated in that process. And that requires this so-called explainability of the AI system. Now, in this particular context, <clears throat> knowledge plays a very important role. Imagine uh, that you have a trellis on which you train the wine. Now, what happens is that currently in the uh, statistical AI, you have basically it works on the patterns, but those, there is no meaning associated with the pattern. When you take the analogy of this training on the wine, uh, the, sorry, on the trellis, the trellis is basically the piece, you know, concepts in the knowledge base. And then you are, your patterns are, are mapped to those concepts. Thereby, you are able to give the names, concept names, and you're able to talk about how you will talk as uh, how humans will think about and talk about um, you know any 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 work that they do any any decisions they make so instead of dealing with just patterns that cannot be explained in terms of the domain decision making uh, you will be making this um, you know system much more meaningful much more uh, uh, explainable um, now uh, these are the things that you know you you may want to make this um, uh, AI system uh, scrutinizable, and um, this is particularly important in healthcare um, and education and some of this uh, discipline. And hence, what is happening is that uh, we are now at the stage where we will finally see AI making real impact into uh, healthcare and um, education. Uh, you might, you know, generally we would notice that in healthcare kind of area, it takes much longer time for technology, any technology to make impact. And similarly, um, AI has taken much longer uh, to show impact into, um, uh, you know, in healthcare. And I, I should know I'm, uh, my third company that I've co-founded is a healthcare company, healthcare AI company. So to 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 tie it all up, to sort of bring the the different areas that we've talked to, to together, you know, how does all of this stuff come together to to set up this next wave of of AI, this next stage of AI, and and what does that mean in in practical applications for people in the future? So one of the interesting thing to notice is that um, by and large, um, the AI systems has been um, uh, there is a tool so far, but there have been visions, uh, for example, uh, uh, computing in 21st century or ambient intelligence. And about a, a little more than a decade ago, I had laid out a vision I call computing for human experience. And the idea is that technology needs to weave into the everyday life or in the human uh, activity and, you know, for that to happen, the AI systems need to be more intelligent. And there needs to be kind of a machine intelligence that AI systems have that come closer to the human intelligence. 
and the, that would allow the AI system to become a better partner and more seamlessly weave the AI into the human technology. If you look at a couple of the very interesting, couple of very interesting um, uh, components of AI, uh, today we call it chatbot, but virtual health assistant, for example, or, uh, you know, we have robotics and uh, there are a lot of potential application of robotics in healthcare. Um, as humans and technology interface and interact and then are integrated further, the uh, ability for the AI system to better understand human, their needs uh, and their wants and, uh, uh, you know, what drives them, such as emotion and empathy. Uh, when, when we have that, we will, uh, you know, um, make a bigger impact onto the human life. And that is what is starting to happen. I've done uh, four companies as I founded or co-founded four companies. Uh, three of them uh, use AI, largely uh, knowledge graphs, uh, machine learning or deep learning and uh, natural language processing and understanding. These are general areas that get you know, incorporated into that. I also um, advise to edutech companies. And so in all of these, we are really seeing, uh, you know, uh, practical applications of these AI techniques into the, um, um, uh, into the human um, daily life. Uh, and also more demanding applications such as healthcare and education. Uh, so we start with initially just helping, um, you know, doctors, let's say, help make you some healthcare decision. But now, so much of the data is collected by patients themselves for the data is healthcare data, let's say, is collected outside of the clinical environment. And uh, one of the strong area of our research is, for example, to help chronic uh, disease patients to self-manage their disease. Uh, in, if you are a chronic health patient, um, uh, you would see your doctor every three months or every six months. What happens for every day between this time period, right? Every day you have to make decision on what food to eat, uh, what, uh, why am I getting symptoms uh, even though I am taking the medication prescribed. These all require contextualization, personalization and abstraction. And these are core components of making this intelligent AI systems. This has started to happen, and that is what um, I see happening in the uh, next decade. So in, la in the coming decade, even though progress so far on applying AI to healthcare education will be rather slow, I see a, a significant acceleration for the, in the next decade and we'll see huge impact. Wow. I mean, there's so much more that we could get into today. I, I mean, I, I just thinking about uh, that, that application in chronic medicine and chronic, uh, chronic health alone, I, I feel like I have 10,000 more questions for you. Uh, but, but that's all the time we have for this chat. Uh, thank you so much, Amit, for being with us today. My pleasure. Thank you for talking. And, and to our audience, thank you for tuning in and stay tuned for more AI Week.